Hello and welcome to the Student Support Portal. The portal is an online community of students, educational professionals and parents of students with a disability who want to keep up to date with the latest developments in assistive technology. Today we are meeting with Ross Nichols from Online Ergonomics. Ross, you're very welcome. Lovely, thank you. Good to be here. Um, Ergonomics, Ross, that, that's something that the entire nation is talking about at the minute. Um, we're all working from home or certainly our, our workstations have been disrupted significantly. Um, how did you get into the online ergonomics industry? Um, can you tell us a bit of background in yourself, first of all? Yeah, sure. Um, I've been in the industry for 14 years now, um, which, uh, which has taken me on lots of different avenues. Uh, I first started off uh, working for an approved DSA supplier where I kind of learned about the products uh, and doing lots of training and started off as an assistive technology trainer. So I've actually had the hands on building the equipment um, and, and looking from the, the ground upwards. Um, I then moved on to a, a company who uh, who focused solely on assessments. And then two years ago, I uh, was approached by online ergonomics. And I now, although the job role hasn't changed too much, I still do the day-to-day -day assessments, but also look after a a network of assessors we have that cover nationwide um, um, day to day assessments. Um, in, in terms of job satisfaction around that, obviously I, I was a student myself um, and seen some of the challenges students have, uh, particularly those with musculoskeletal issues or disabilities. So being able to, to, to relate to them and support them, uh, that really does give me a lot of job satisfaction, what I do day to day now. So Ross, you've talked about the company name Online Ergonomics. Um, it, it sounds a very clear company name as to what that company does. Um, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the company itself and the types of product that you would offer? Yeah, certainly. Uh, we get asked quite a lot of times, so it, it's funny that you picked up on that, Online Ergonomics, or use just online. Ultimately, the answer is no. Now, well, the answer is no. At the start of time, it was based just on an online reseller point of view. Um, we've now developed to be one of the largest suppliers of products to the DSA market um, and actually have a full install team. So we're, we're now pride ourselves on um, ultimately trying to offer a one-stop shop for those uh, um, assessment centers or students. So you can we can fulfill the assessments. We can then go back and deliver and install all the products and actually offer all the necessary training as well. So there's that what hence the, the one-stop shop and that is nationwide coverage. From a commercial point of view, yet we're a dealer, a reseller, um, and, and what's important to know is we're actually the UK distributor for uh, many of the products out there. Uh, we have access to seating, um, desking, all the peripherals around laptop use, monitor use, um, which allows us to be very competitive uh, when it comes to price. Okay, I was going to ask you who your typical client would be, but I'm, I'm guessing with the, the COVID-19 pandemic at the moment, that maybe has changed a little bit. Um, so <laughs> maybe I'll break it into two. Who was your typical client and who maybe now is your typical client? Yeah, um, well, uh, we haven't actually seen a great change in terms of who, who we're supporting now. Um, we, we like to think we're always quite uh, front runners in terms of what we're trying to bring into the market. We're always looking at new products, new invention, new ways of working. So... Yes, there's that, that pandemic now where everybody's ultimately been told overnight, let's pick the laptop up and go and work from home. Um, so I, I, I would love the opportunity to look at more of the COVID-19 situations and support you. But on a, on a general normal basis, DSA um, market is, is something that we look to support and be and remain active in, um, as well as organisations who have uh, DSA users who, who may be starting to develop the uh, the, the work-related symptoms, uh, musculoskeletal issues, and really embrace the concept of ergonomics um, with a goal of increasing the well-being of staff or employees uh, in, in trying to, to move. And where, where we feel pride is moving somebody who starts off with a musculoskeletal issue and actually develop that into a productivity tool. So if you've got somebody who can only maybe sit for 10 minutes on a standard chair, because they have coccidemia or they have lumbar issues, um, joint manipulation problems, 
by giving them the right support mechanism allows them to sit and ultimately for longer and ultimately be more productive because they're not in pain for for maybe as long or they can they can manage that pain so that's really the types of people that we're trying to support all the time and look out for okay it's interesting to hear you turning that into a positive because i'm sure from an employer's point of view if they have a staff member who maybe has some sort of mobility issues or postural difficulties they're thinking oh they're not as productive yep. but you're saying by putting your supports in place you can actually increase the productivity of that staff member that's correct yes yeah we'll, we'll see we'll see that quite a bit yes okay and in terms of products if somebody mentioned to me about ergonomics um i probably will think of a chair um i, I might think of a keyboard or mouse yeah. Um, but I definitely I would associate a higher cost with the word ergonomic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, but for the average home user or maybe office worker, um, let, let's take a mouse, for example. Yeah. Um, what would the mouse be that you would recommend? And how does that compare in price to a standard just off the shelf mouse? Yeah, certainly. Um, so so we, we get faced with this quite a lot of um, y- y- ergonomic products are typically more expensive than something you can find on the likes of Amazon or pick up from PC world. And, and it's wrong for people to say that these standard products don't, uh, don't work. Yes, they absolutely do. But when you're looking at somebody that's maybe got some fatigue issues or musculoskeletal issues, then let's take the, the mouse, for example, we only know a mouse, um, a, a standard mouse if we said to the to Joe public there's a go and find me a standard mouse you know they'd come back with the little piece of plastic that just sits flat on the desk but that's because we got told that was standard how about if we if we, we reverse that round so if we were given something like the roller mouse or a uni mouse which I'll, I'll i'll put up so you can see what i'm on about in just a moment if we were told that that was the norm and then came along later to say oh you've got some issues why don't you use this one dimensional piece of plastic imagine the looks we would get then so it's just to try and change the the perspective of how people look at it because it's different ultimately when you do improve the manufacturing quality and the adjustability there's a cost associated to that because ergonomic products are built for functionality, not just as a cost exercise. So this particular product is a Contour Uni mouse. It's a vertical mouse uh, with multiple adjustments. It's pr- it's priced competitively in the market, to be fair. Um, and the, the advantage of the Uni mouse is it changes from 25 degree neutral wrist position up to 75 degree position and anywhere in between. It's a one size mouse, so you don't have to worry about have I got small hands, large hands, etc. Because Contour have designed this thumb support that pulls out, pushes forwards, and bends and flex. So ultimately, just to give you a, a, a kind of a size perspective, I'm six foot four. I would say I have medium to large hands, and I can support my thumb and full palm on there. And the beauty is you can customize those buttons to any function you want on your laptop. Um, Just looking at the preferred setup that I currently use, and I don't have any, fortunately don't have any musculoskeletal issues, but if I can just transfer my camera down for you. This is a roller mouse and it's a central pointing device. Um, Again, initially set starts out as a, as a solution to a musculoskeletal need. So typically uh, elbow upwards, so shoulder issues, uh, thoracic issues. And what you've got is you've got, a, you can go transfer from your keyboard down to the central point and mouse. It's gripless, it's central, it's ambidextrous. So you can remain supported all, all ways. When people, when the users start understanding the concept of the mouse to the keyboard, it becomes a productivity tool just really in on what I said before because you don't then have to reach out to use a standard mouse and back in it's all central but it does take a little bit of getting used to but most ergonomic products do have that concept of change because we've been preached to what the norm is a little lump of plastic for so many years yeah I love that idea that the mouse actually configures to your hand not that you have to go out and buy a small medium or large mouse that somebody has thought this has to fit the user not the user has to fit the device yeah, absolutely i mean to, to try and get you know human nature doesn't like change so the easier you can make a product for a user to go that's the one i need 
it allows an easier transition or, or adaptability for somebody to say, I'll have a go at that because I know I'm buying the right one. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. And at the moment, um, up until now, we've avoided the price point. So <laughs> let's talk about a, if I walk into a standard PC shop, I would pick up a mouse for £25. Yeah. Um, how does that compare to the, the uni mouse that you demonstrated there? So yeah, so so the the uni mouse uh, that we've just demonstrated there that retails at seventy five pound um, from a retail point of view, but again, just and we touched on it just before looking at the value of from a from a cost point of view, you would choose standard all day long. But when you've got some, what you have to do is understand the value on your well being. So if you're struggling with a standard mouse, that seventy five pound is a one cost. But then what you've got to remember is users are starting to sit behind the PCs more than ever now. We're getting a good dose of that with COVID-19. Um, when you break that down over what we call the product life cycle, then and you work out how, off, how, lo how much time is your hand spent touching that mouse mm -hmm. to the £75 of your initial outlay at retail, um, you then start to see the value and the productivity of that mouse coming into play where standard mice, you might have to buy, I mean, speaking from personal experience, when I have used standard mice during studies, et cetera, early parts of working before I got right into the ergonomics, you know, sometimes the break, the, the don't work, you normally get that little bit long, you get a better warranty with your, with your ergonomic mice as well. Okay, you yeah, know, I, I can see that. That's an interesting way to look at that, that over the, the lifetime of three years, the yeah. amount of time my hand is sitting on that mouse, it maybe cost me 10, 12 pounds a year more than a, a standard mouse, which doesn't have that feature. Yeah, absolutely. And, it, and it's, it's now starting to be seen as it's an investment for your working life because life doesn't stop just after being a student or after that day's work. You're going to be integrating with that product for a, a large portion of your life particularly chairs that comes up all the time of well, why does that chair cost 500 pound when you when the amount of adjustability in in changes that you can put into products they come at a cost but then when you actually break it down you're on that every day seven eight hours maybe for what feels like the rest of your life yeah yeah, no, it's an interesting take on ergonomics that really we're investing in ourselves and our productivity. And yeah. we need to perhaps set aside that, oh, but it costs a little bit more argument yeah. and think, but what's the benefit to me over three, yeah. four years? Yeah, Absol absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, when you're looking at some of the studies out there, um, the amount of hours, working days that we're losing through absenteeism, ultimately, Britain is, Britain is a nation because we're all reactive and we think about, we see ergonomics as just, just a cost. I'm not trying to dispute the fact that, yes, there is a cost associated to ergonomics, but when you need that adjustability, hopefully you can see it's almost more of a cost neutral when you, when you put that against the benefits. So rather than just being reactive, we're ultimately trying to be proactive. And then hopefully what we can see is a reduction in, well, we're paying somebody to from from a from a corporate world we're paying somebody not to be at work why don't we invest in that piece of equipment to support them at work which saves you on training cost absenteeism from a dsa point of view that students paying for study time in a course if they're losing two and three days because of a lack of support around a musculoskeletal point well there's if you break again that year's cost over to a week you're losing your cost there, but you could gain it from that support mechanism. Yeah, and I think one of the best, um, I guess, ways to say that ergonomics work is that in our office, we received several Unimice as demo models. Yeah. And anybody who used them is still using them. That's their mice of choice now. Yeah. That's what they use in the office exclusively. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. absolutely. You, you normally find those who are willing to who are open to change. I, I used the term before, human nature don't like, doesn't like change. So you get into your car, you know you've maybe got your mints in your central pouch, your wallet goes in your little ducket. If you switch them over, it doesn't feel right. Although you've still got access to, those, to, to that same situation, it's just the concept of change. Once you understand that, you get used to that. And quite often, yeah, 
people won't go back to what is perceived as the standard once they've tried it. Because why would you reduce your adjustability? It's about moving. Yeah, so I think that's the key is if you get people using ergonomic products, they would never yeah. consider going back to something that wasn't ergonomic. Yeah, I agree. Yes. Yeah. So, Ross, if people want to get their hands on these products, um, yeah. where do they go? Do you want them all to come to the website? Can you give us an indication of how to do that? Yeah, sure. Um, we we resell uh, on multiple different platforms. Um, e-commerce is one of our stronger points. Um, hence, with the name, um, you can you can purchase products from www online-ergonomics.co.uk there's access to uh, digital copies hard copies of our brochure as well as a dedicated sales team and um, that you can use via telephone as well and um, all those details will be on our website and what we pride ourselves on you touched on the contour uh, support is uh, we pride ourselves on all products are on a two-week sale or return to allow our uh, we we'll call them our students so you know you know um DSE users as a, as a whole to to try those products again it's you've got to get them in you've got to get them used to understand the benefits of them as opposed to just saying this will be great why I'm, I'm used to that and I'm used to working for two hours a day without digressing back onto the previous one so yeah online brochures um is your best method to come through and speak to us. Great. Okay. And obviously, um, Online Ergonomics has a dedicated group on the DSA portal. So if any of our viewers want to go onto that, you can reach out to Ross directly and the rest of his team. Um, Ross, we were also talking earlier about homeworkers on the current COVID-19 situation. Um, I, I know you were quite keen to put on a couple of webinars maybe for people who are working at home certainly all the kids are working at home at the moment um, yeah. so is there a plan for that or are you going to do an online webinar yes um I, i'll look to do something um next week if possible um in in now people will be starting again it's all about the realization of those people so the first couple of days when we didn't know how long we were going to be working from home for the laptop on the dining room table with the dining room chair might have been suitable you look and we're, we're coming into our third week now those musculoskeletal issues although maybe not diagnosed musculoskeletal but general back pain neck pain from sitting too high too low i'll all be starting to be coming to the forefront now so i would like to focus more in detail next week and do something um around the covid19 lockdown phase um but you know the, try and think outside of the box because some people get homed into this doesn't work this is no good what can i do they associate the big price costs just to give you a couple of factors if you are working even over the easter bank holiday is cookbooks are quite large and thick books get them under laptops get them under monitors don't forget about rolling towels up yes remember this is not what we're trying to say is the best way of working but if you're only being productive for 20 minutes because you're feeling some lumbar pain try and roll towels up gives you some support it's what we normally do when we're away from the office. How many times do you sit and you put, you know, a, a cardigan down the back and, and, and things like that. So it's just trying to think around those aspects. But next week, I'd like to talk to you from those principles to some some general input uh, equipment that you can use to being able to, to, to support yourself from a, a full ergonomic position. Excellent. That's really useful, Ross. Um, we'll make sure we publish that on the portal and we'll direct people to your page there. Cool. So, um, folks, if you log back into the DSA portal, um, we will link to Ross's group site and we'll also put a link up um, for that additional video of how you can work at home temporarily during the COVID-19 pandemic. And Ross and his team will be suggesting lots of either free or very cheap methods of obtaining a, a suitable-ish workstation standard at yeah. home. Yeah, Ross, certainly. thank you very much for joining us. We'll speak to you again. My pleasure. Thanks very much. Thank you. This interview was part of our Publishers and Manufacturers series of interviews. If you'd like more information on the products that were discussed in the interview, please go to the portal Assistive Technology section and start a conversation. Thanks for watching.